Chris, thanks so much for joining me here. How are you doing? Great. Thanks so much for having me. You do some really interesting work that involves harnessing the power of big data to actually fight human trafficking. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. This work started with uh, DARPA Memex, it's called. So a little while ago, the DARPA, the defense agency, uh, started a project where they were looking through basically, uh, it's not very nice, but sex and work ads, uh, and looking for people who were being advertised that were potentially being trafficked. So right now, people who are being trafficked may be uh, sold into prostitution. Um, it's sort of visible on the web, but we simply can't get access to that information. And so one thing that we've been participating with, uh, with them in the Deep Dive project is going through that unstructured information, all of these ads that are out there, and extracting relevant pieces of information. Who's in the ad? Where is the location? What's the service being offered? Now, this seems a little bit unseemly, but if we can put that information together, we can get a better idea, we hope, of which people are trafficked and the networks of people who are trafficking these individuals. And so this is really a big data problem. There's a lot of this textual ads that are out there, and we're trying to boil it down into a sort of a manageable set for law enforcement. When you say that someone is extracting this information. Is that someone sitting on the computer clicking through or is it a computer that's doing this? Yeah, it used to be. So in, by and large, what's been happening before is that law enforcement was just overwhelmed with the sheer number of ads and text that's out there. And so they could only look at a very small portion of it. What we're doing and why this is a big data approach is actually making a machine deep dive that's able to run through all of these ads and extract that information uh, with very high quality. So to be able to pull out those attributes essentially automatically. Wow, that must make it a lot easier for law enforcement. We hope, we hope. So the initial indications are that the project is, seems to be going uh, quite well, uh, but that's opaque to us. Our, our real interest is in the data science aspect of it, which is the hard problem of going from the text to those structured fields that we want to produce. And then our partners are the ones who take it and do the real work from there. How is the work you do with Deep Dive relevant to medicine and biodata? Sure. So there are two projects that are going on in our lab uh, that are in various stages. Uh, one of them is a project with Gil Bejarano, uh, who's in pediatrics and also in computer science. And Gil has been doing some really interesting work in genomics. Now it turns out, uh, my layman's understanding of genomics, that basically what goes on uh, when someone comes in with a rare disease, some child comes in with a rare disease, is they sort of roughly very uh, know sort of what's damaged in the genome, and they know a bunch of symptoms that the child is presenting. And what they have is this phenomenon that they sometimes call Dr. Google, where they basically just take all of the things that are damaged with the child, uh, that they see from the genomic and genetic screening, and the diseases, and they just bash them into the computer. Right. This only works some fraction of the time. Uh, because the literature is growing very, very rapidly, and it's sort of not indexed in any substantial way. So instead, what we're trying to do is use Deep Dive to basically take all of the medical literature that's out there and put a nice structured database that has all of this information so it can be at the doctor's fingertips, and that will hopefully allow them to find some of these associations in the literature much more easily. So that's one of the projects, and we're applying it to medicine. So as a physician, I can um, approach a patient and simply kind of input the symptoms that my patient has and see if I can find a corresponding... Um, genetic variant, if you will? Exactly. Something in the literature, some pathway that's affected, something that someone, some researcher in some lab has published somewhere in a scientific article, which is otherwise opaque to the researcher because they couldn't find that connection. They didn't have enough, maybe, Time. data or, or patients. <laughs> or, to even... or no one has read that and put it in a nice structured form. And that's the niche that Deep Dive really fills, is taking that unstructured information and putting it in a nice structured form so the physician can consume it. So this is the kind of stuff we're doing there. The other project is with, led by Scott Delp, which is in this NIH center, uh, the Big Data to Knowledge Centers. And there we're trying to look through basically patient medical records uh, to try and extract all that structured information about what kind of implants are people uh, receiving for various mobility related problems, osteoarthritis related problems. And you can imagine that uh, knowing which type of implants, what the features of the patient are, is quite a challenging problem. So all this is recorded by doctors, but it's not recorded by physicians in a way that makes it easy for automated analysis. And that's another place that we're really excited to apply deep dive to uh, with the recent support of the NIH. Can you talk a little bit about what that might be used for in terms of uh, improving patient care? Uh, for example, we may want to look and see that various types of implants that are put in one type of patient uh, are causing some systematic risk. So if a patient has some particular set of features, some particular health concerns, and I don't understand the medicine side of it, but they have some health concerns, and they have a particular implant, that there could be some reaction. This would be difficult to detect, especially if it's very rare. But if we can read all the patient records, maybe it becomes obvious. Now, we don't know that that's true, but that's what we hope, and so we're starting to build these kinds of systems that it can at least unearth all this structured information that's latent in these medical records. You're almost like data archaeologists trying to find <laughs> these trends. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Our first thing was actually in uh, paleobiology. It was the oh. first system we actually built. There you go. So we were quite literally data archaeologists <laughs> there, which is a system called Paleo Deep Dive. Wow. Yeah.
Thanks so much for speaking with me. Thanks so much for the time. Appreciate Take it. care.